Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining our morning worship at Empowering Word Ministries. We are so thankful to the Lord that you have decided to join us today. Um, we're going to get started with a word of prayer because prayer changes things. Amen. And we're going to have our Deacon Sassy pray us in. Amen. As she comes. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And as I pray this morning, I ask that you all pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you for another day, another glorious, beautiful day that you have led us into the land of the living. Another day, if we didn't get it right, we can try again. Another day that you said that our journey, our ministry have not been completed. And we thank you for that today. Father, we come, oh God, asking that you would forgive us for anything, oh God, that is within us that is not of you. God, maybe we said something we shouldn't have said, or maybe we acted in a way we shouldn't have acted. Maybe we got a little attitude or we let our egos get ahead of us. So God, forgive us for that today. God, we bind up our wills today and let your will come forth. God, we open ourselves willingly, wanting and needing you on today in a special way. God, we ask that you would bless the word of the house today, oh God, that it would come, oh God, to free your people, that it would come to deliver your people, God, that it would come to give us some hope, oh God, in the things that are going on in the world today. But God, we also know on the flip side of that, that anything that happens, oh God, you are aware and in control of. So God, we thank you for that today. God, anyone who is watching today who needs some release, God, let the release come. Anyone who's needing us some strength and some power, oh God, let the heavens of gate flood open upon them today in a special way. And God, we say thank you today. We honor you. We glorify you today in a good and special way. And in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you, our Deacon Sassy, for that word of prayer. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to have our praise and worship service. Amen. As our brother, Sir Jazz Carr Watson, comes to bless us. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right from our several places and our several destinations, we still lift the name of Jesus high this morning. We still believe that he is great and greatly to be praised. He's a great, big, and amazing God. And we say that we are so grateful for all the things that he's doing in this age and all the things that he's doing. And above that, this morning, we thank God that he's still God. Amen. Anybody just grateful that his hand is still mighty, that his hand is still strong, that he is still delivering his people. Amen. Anybody just excited for, even though in this quarantine, I thank God that we might have lost the the ability to go a lot of places. But one thing I know, I might not have a lot of words for how I feel right now pertaining to this quarantine. But what I do know is that I still have praise. And I still have my praise. And if I still have my praise, I still have my worship. And if I still have my worship, I still have my testimony of how great he is and how he never runs out and how great his favor is. So this morning, I just want you to join me. We just want to lift up a couple songs. We're just going to lift up a couple of great hymns to the Lord of the Lord. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God sing with me how great our God don't see how great how great is our God how great you're the name above all names you are worthy of all, yes, you are all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God, 
Come on, from where you are, would you lift it up with me? How great, how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all we see, how great, how great is our God. You're the name above the whole name. You are worthy of all praise. Yes, you are. And my heart will sing how great is our God. You're the name above the whole name. You are worthy of all praise. Yes, you are. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. Yes, Lord. You're the name above all names. And you are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great. Is our God. You are the name above our name. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Right from where you are, just lift up a praise in your homes, in your work offices, because he's the great and true and mighty God, still great, still great to be praised. And we cannot forget the depth of what he's done for us and the depth of who he is. So we cry out, he's a great God. For the name of our name. Yes, you are. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. I will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, if you know him as a true and mighty God, just lift him up. Father, thank you for being a great and mighty God. Thank you for being great. Thank you for being bigger than any big, bigger than any situation, Father, that we could ever find ourselves in, Father. We thank you for being a great and mighty God. We thank you for being a holy and undeniably powerful God. So because of that, we say, searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Yes, sir. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than you. I want to know this next part. Help me sing it. It says, Your name is above all names. You got it. 
He is who 
is nobody great. Nobody great. There's nobody greater than you. We now will turn you into the hands of our minister and training, Jennifer. Thank you, our brother Serge as Car Watson. You bless us every Sunday, and we appreciate you for that. Thank you for letting the Lord use you. Amen. Our next part of the, the uh, service will be our scripture. Uh, please look towards the screen as our sister, Devon Mack, come to read our word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Uh, today's scripture will be read from um, 2 Corinthians uh, 1 through 16. Because we have these promises, dear friend, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work towards complete holiness because we fear God. Please open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone, nor led anyone astray, nor taken advantage of anyone. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I said before that you are in our hearts and we live or die together with you. For I have the highest confidence in you, and I take it great pride in you. You have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite all our troubles. When we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction, with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. But God, who encourage those who are discouraged, encouraged by the arrival of Titus. His presence was a joy, but so was the news he brought of the encouragement he received from you. When he told us how much you longed to see me and how sorry you are for what happened and how loyal you are to me, I was fulfilled with joy. I am not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you, though I was sorry at first, for I know it was painful for you for a little while. Now I am glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways, my God. It was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have, so you were not harmed by us in any way. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience led us away from the sin and results in salvation. There is no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. Just see what this godly sorrow produced in you. See earning this, such concern to clear yourself, such indignation, such alarm, such alarming to see, longing to see me, such zeal, such readiness to punish wrong. You show that you have done everything necessary to make things right. My purpose then was not to write about who did wrong or who was wrong. I wrote to you so that in the sight of God, you can see for yourself how loyal you are to us. We have been greatly encouraged by this. In addition to our own encouragement, we were especially delighted to see how happy Titus was about the way all of you welcomed him and set his mind at ease. I had told him how proud I was of you and you didn't disappoint me. I have always told you the truth and now my boasting to Titus has also proved true. Now he cares for you more than ever when he remembers the way all of you obeyed him and welcomed him with such fear and deep respect. I am very happy now because I have complete confidence in you. Thank you, our sister Devon Mack, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen. Thank you. Uh, next, we will have our church motto. If you could read along with me on the screen. Uh, this is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's being built by God, being established by his word. This is the church that love is building. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Jesus is truly Lord today and every day. 
And we're so glad that you've taken the time to worship with us. And if this is your first time being with us today, please choose to uh, follow us again next Sunday and every Sunday. Uh, for now, we will be on the uh, Zoom conference room to uh, give our virtual services. And you can also follow us on any of the social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more updates and information. Amen. Now it's our offering time. Um, thank you. As you can see on the screen, we do have the uh, cash app ability where you can give uh, money to our church through dollar sign empowering. Um, if you do not have cash app, we can take checks. If you would like to send them to our Empowering Word Ministries at 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey. Um, again, you can cash app us at dollar sign empowering, or you can mail your checks to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey. Thank you. Next, we'll have our announcements. Uh, on June 6th, right here at the Zoom meeting room, we will have our biannual board meeting um, and all the members who are uh, supposed to be there, I will contact you shortly. Um, June 21st is our men's day and June 29th is our biannual church meeting, um, also being held in the virtual Zoom room at this moment until further updates are made. And those are our announcements. If you're looking for prayer, we have plenty of that here, plenty of blessed uh, intercessors and praying warriors in our in our midst. And so if you're looking for some prayer, join us as we seek God on our VIP prayer line every Wednesday at 6 a.m. and every Sunday at 8 a.m. You can see the phone number on the screen. Um, if you need it, please feel free to um, contact us through our social media sites and we can get you that information. Also, if you'd like to place a name on our prayer, our sick and shut in list, Please contact one of our church deacons or myself, Jennifer Smith, the church secretary. I can help you get on that list, and as can our deacon Sassy and our deacon Gigi. Amen. Now it's time for the word of God. Amen. I'm excited, and we have the best pastor in the land. I don't know about y'all, but we have the best, and so we're going to go to his screen as we bring up Pastor John F. Clayton Jr. Amen. As he comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's so good to see all of you and to the Empowering Word family. I wrote something in the chat that says you all look so good um, today and this morning. God really looks good on each one of you. And so I bless the Lord for you. Amen. And what God is doing in your lives. I just wanted to ask you all to remember to pray for Pastor Christina Brinson and her church Amen. She's not out yet. The last I heard, she was still in ICU. So let's continue to pray for her, but God is sustaining her while she is there. So continue to pray for her. Amen. And I know that these are trying times and some of us have cabin fever, but I want you all, amen, still to obey, amen, the rules of quarantine. Is that all right? Can you do that for me? Amen. I'm, I'm obeying the rules of quarantine. And then pastor wants to go to the mall or do something other than look at all this stuff in this house. Amen. But I want you all to obey the rules of quarantine. I'm going to read a scripture. This is not my scripture text, so I'm not going to preach from it. But there was a plague in the land in the time of Egypt. And the scripture says, and they shall take the blood and strike it on the pope, on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Amen. And so we know that there was a, a plague in the time of Egypt, but the instruction was to put the blood on the on the door post. Amen. And they were supposed to stay in the house. I'm just trying to help y'all. Amen. I, I see my preachers going crazy. Amen. They, they, they were supposed to obey the rules. Amen. And stay in the house. Now, Verse 13 of that same chapter in chapter 12 of Exodus says, and the blood shall be on you for a token upon the house where you are. Amen. Now, what would have happened to Shechem if you walked out of the house during the play? I'm just asking. Was the blood So the blood was assigned to the house and not to Shechem and everybody that was in the house. All right. All my preachers and the Bible students are shaking their heads. Amen. So let's be obedient. I know we want to say, you know, the blood is on me and the blood is, so I'm going to walk out and the blood is on me. Yes, baby. Yes, it is true. Amen. The blood is upon you. Amen. And the blood has signed your name. You know, we want to be deep with stuff like that. But let's, let's, let's stay in the house. 
amen. A virus, amen, doesn't care whether you're sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna say to all of my young men that love playing basketball, listen, if you have a contract and a scholarship with basketball, do not threaten that by saying, I got to play ball. Listen, they are prepared to get you back in shape when they see you back on the court, trust me, amen. So stay in the house. Amen, lift you some weights, run around in that. I see athletes doing 100 mile marathons in their living room, amen. They're not running outside, amen. They're obeying the rules of the land. I don't know what's wrong with some of us that wanna break rules and then we want prayer after we break the rule. There wouldn't be need for prayer, amen, if we follow the rule, amen. All right, I'm on Facebook, so I don't wanna get all, uh, you know, on the soapbox. Let's go to the word of God, amen. Continue to pray for us. Amen. Listen, wisdom cries out on the street. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Wisdom cries out. I know saints that are spilled speaking in tongues, but they lack wisdom. Amen. Wisdom cries out in the street. Amen. If you have your Bible, amen. Pray for my sister, Pastor Day, our assistant pastor, Pastor Dana Divine. Amen. She's well, all is well. Amen. And so continue to pray for her. Amen. I want you all to know that um, this is the time <clears throat> where we're getting approaching next Sunday, I believe it is. Um, I looked up the date because um, I have to look up things now. I looked up the date and I think next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And so on Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to turn 59 years old. Amen. Isn't that apropos? Amen. That's interesting. Now, I wasn't probably born on Pentecost Sunday. I have to look that up. Amen. But my mother probably didn't think it was Pentecost when I was born considering that I did not want to come out, amen, out of the room and I had to be pulled out. Somebody said, amen. <laughs> I had to be pulled out with forceps, amen. But that's a story she can tell you, amen. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because I might take the day off next Sunday, amen. I'll be on and hear you all, but I might take the day off. So I'm praying about that. Uh, Ephesians 5.18, get it in your um, electronic devices in your Bible. <clears throat> Amen. Ephesians 5, thank you, our church secretary, for putting that out. And I'm reading it in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> Isn't it nice that you can get all these translations? Amen. I was talking to a good preacher friend of mine, young preacher man. Him and I both like to read out the New King James Version. You know, we like a this thou and be it with it longeth if. Amen. But we can read it in the New Living um, the NLT translation, which reads, don't be drunk with wine <clears throat> because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the spirit, right? And the King James version, which I probably memorized, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled, hallelujah, with the spirit. <clears throat> Pray for me. Amen. I want to talk about level up. <clears throat> I want to talk about level up. There is an experience that happened in the early church that I believe needs to be revived in the 21st century church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I am a baby of the 20th century church. Amen. The last half of the 20th century church. And I've seen many transitions in the life of the church. Amen. Since I got saved uh, early in my life and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior, and he changed my life never to be the same again. There was an experience that changed the life of the believer. There was something about that time and something about the era that when we went to the altar and the people of God prayed for us and we came back from the altar, our lives were changed and were never the same again. There was the experience that many of us had at the altar at our baptism or at our conversion. <clears throat> This was the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. Follow me if you can. This was the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. This baptism saves us and changes us, right? Regenerates us. Amen. At the time of our belief in Jesus Christ, Ephesians 1 and 13 says it this way. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him <clears throat> with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. And all of us that come from the Pentecostal church, we didn't hear Holy Spirit that much. That was for high church. We called it the Holy Ghost with the, <laughs> with the Holy Ghost, who is a deposit 
guaranteeing in your Bible, if you read in the King James Version, it probably says, which is an earnest, good God Almighty, our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. First Corinthians 13, First Corinthians 12 and 13 says, for we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given to the of the spirit to drink. First John in 4, 13 says, this is how we know that we live in him and he is in us. He has given us of his spirit. But there is another experience or encounter that many of us had with the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. They were, there were times that God came and we were refilled with the precious presence of the Holy Ghost. Good God Almighty. You see, we were taught, I was taught, there's only one baptism, but many refillings. Good God Almighty. Amen, amen. There is a filling of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Let me say this, let me say this. This has nothing to do with our baptism in Christ. Your baptism in Christ, there was nothing wrong with it. Amen, you are sealed with Christ through baptism. But things happen in life that condemn the embers of the fire of God in our lives, amen. Paul alluded to this when he told Timothy, stir up the gift, fan the flames, stir the fire. Even among those whose life has been changed, there is much fainting and weariness. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, even in the house of God, people are falling by the wayside. People are weary. We have people laying on hands on people and lives have not been changed. They leave us with an emotional experience, but lives have not been changed. We are prophesying, speaking in tongues, shouting and dancing and singing, but we still have fainting and weariness in the house of God. Pastor, where's the happy part? I'm gonna get there in a little bit. It is for the lack of power that we faint and we are weary. Good God Almighty, amongst all the gifts and all the graces that God bestows upon us, there is still an inability for many to overcome the evils and perils of life today. Many, even, and I'm not talking about folks in the world, many in church are anemic. Hallelujah, they're low on iron and low on power. They're lethargic, apathetic, majoring on minors and nagging on gnats, paying attention to the spectacular and not the particulars that God requires for us to be overcomers in this life. Many are resorting to showmanship instead of relying on the power of God. I was reading the Bible the other day and I was reminded of the story of Simeon who was a magician. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And the people were Lord to him because he was a magician and they believed in him until the real thing, good God Almighty, until Philip and the apostles came with power and demonstration. And their power and demonstration was so powerful and so different than what Simeon had done. Simeon said, listen, can I buy this Holy Ghost? Good God Almighty, hallelujah, can I pay for this power? Good God Almighty, and if anybody knows, like I know, you can't pay for real power with God. Amen. All creative and sustaining power is his. All fullness dwells in him. The Bible says that power belongs to God. We must realize that power is nothing. It's not something that we put on. Amen. It's not a suit or a dress. I'm going to put on God's power today and change my heels and my shoes and my pump and do something different. Hallelujah. It's something that must dwell. Good God Almighty, I feel Jesus. It's something that must dwell on the inside of us. Something that enters into our being, our very being, our very osia, our very essence, bringing increased capacity and responsibility. Good God Almighty, if you have the power of God, amen, your territory ought to be enlarged. Amen, your capacity needs to be greater. I've never seen anyone that has more power in God do less. Oh, bless God. Ours is the only faith whose God has chosen to be resident and present in the lives of those he loves. I will be in them. I will live in them. I will take, make my abode in them. Jesus says, unless ye abide in me, you got to abide in me and my word abide in you. Listen, abide doesn't mean I opt out, but I stay connected to him. 
You can ask what you will and it will be given to you. In the old dispensation, amen, amen. The old dispensation, God came upon men. But in this new dispensation, his spirit dwells in every believer that will receive the filling of the Holy Ghost. To have more of his life means more power, amen, in him. The spirit of life is the spirit of power, amen. This is power, not that of a resolve, I resolve and I do something. That's not the kind of power I'm talking about. I'm young and youthful, amen. I work out at the gym and I have power. It's not natural enthusiasm. It's not charisma because people like you, amen. But it is the power of God, which is an all consuming fire. It is, it is an ancient power. Good God Almighty, this power didn't just wake up because you came into the earth. Good God Almighty, God's power is ancient and is as eternal in God. God's power is co-equal. Good God Almighty, become, it comes from the Holy Ghost. Let me help you out because the spirit of God moved upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Abundance of life means the abundance of power. I'm talking about spiritual power. My old bishop said that the anointing is an enablement. It enables you, amen, to do something. Amen. Now, Holy Ghost, you don't have the Holy Ghost and the power of God and just sit on it. No, baby. No, 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 no. The scripture says, how can you be a light and then cover the light? Amen. How can you have God's power? I'm talking about those that have real power with God and not exude the light and the glory of God. It is an enablement. It is a fitness. It is a might, inherent power, the power of reproducing itself, just like a dynamo, not outside influence. Uh, no outside influence is needed to spark the power of God. It is ability to overcome, ability to execute. Uh, not the ability just to dream, but to execute the will, plans, and dictates of God. However, there are requirements for this refilling and refreshing. Listen, we have to stop pronouncing that these are times of refreshing or spiritual revival, amen, until we meet the requirements. We need to stop pronouncing and start preparing for a fresh outpouring of the power of God. I've heard it. I've heard preachers say it. It sounds good as a, a nice marketing compound. Oh, these are the times of refreshing. Oh, there's a fresh wind coming. But we never tell the saints what you got to do to receive the refreshing. Will God Almighty, I know I wasn't popular with that. Amen. It sounds good on our placards and our cards. Times of refreshing, fresh wind. But we never really tell the people whether they've met the requirements. What are the requirements, pastor? What are the requirements, apostle and prelate and cardinal, for me to step into what's next in God? Amen. We heard Jesus say this in Luke 24. He pronounced that I will send the promise of my father, but wait in Jerusalem, good God Almighty, until you be endued with power from on high. What did they do? They followed the criteria. See, sometimes we want stuff without following the criteria and meeting the requirements. They follow the criteria to have power from on high. We find their obedience in Acts, the first, the first chapter. He tells the boys that were assembled, wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For truly, John baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. But ye shall receive power, good God Almighty. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. They all got in the upper room. Amen. They were afraid. Amen. The Romans were after them. They were afraid between the time of the crucifixion, the resurrection, and, and his ascension and the, de uh, the descending of the Holy Ghost into the earth. They were afraid, but they looked past all of that look past their schism and whatever their issues would be, and 120 of them got in the upper room. What are the requirements, Pastor? Because, you know, I can't, you know, hold people to task for something and not tell you what the requirements are. What are the requirements that I might see this refilling in my life? Amen. The whole offering has to be on the altar. Your God Almighty, amen. If you want to really experience the refilling of God, is your all on the altar. A sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control? Amen. Listen, the altar is pretty. The altar is glorious. The altar is fabulous, but it's no good without a sacrifice. Good God Almighty. 
It is in the members of the body that consecration and sacrifice has to be lived out. Listen, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Our life is not one great initial dedication, but continually acts of surrender. Amen. Listen, you can't fool God. You can fool the saints. God knows when the altar is filled. <laughs> God knows when your all is on the sacrifice. You can fool me. Amen. You can fool the church mother. Amen. You can fool the choir member. But God knows, hallelujah, if your all is on the altar. And after a while, we're going to know whether or not your all is on the altar. If you want the effects and benefits of the abiding presence and power of God, it's all or nothing at all. Pastor, what's the next thing that has to happen? The counterfeit has to be excluded. Hallelujah. Listen, this is called, some of us have an imposter syndrome. Amen. We're mimicking presence. Amen. We have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof because we really don't want to do the work. Amen. We want the benefits of the work, but we really don't want to do the work to really have the power. Amen. We really don't want to be broken. Good God Almighty. We really don't want to lay out before God to really get the power that sister, mother, evangelist, pastor, so-and-so had 20 years ago. Amen. We just want to wake up one day and say, I'm saved and get up in a pulpit and have power. Baby, you got to do work and the way of the cross is the work. Amen. We have to get rid of the counterfeit. There has to be no room for imposters or that which is false. There has to be no room for, I like how the saints used to say this, John, sit down, that's flesh on parade. Amen, amen, that's flesh on parade. Amen, no room for personalities. Amen, no room for intellect that is not yielded to God. No room for gifts that are operated based on emotions and feelings. Amen, all idols, amen, all idols. Amen, if you are an idol to yourself, you have to throw your own idol down. Amen, if you want to feel the great presence and glory of God. False gods, amen, and false things and false altars must be torn down. Amen. What is the third thing that we have to do? We have to restore worship back to its right place. Good God Almighty. God must be elevated and exalted above all things. We must focus solely on God. Listen, I would hear Jesus. Amen. I would focus my eyes on God. God who is our source and our resource, eternal, pure, holy, and all-consuming. Amen. We have to stop telling people that there is a next level. Gotta, we got to stop. Amen. There's a fresh wind. There's a new anointing without telling them the requirements. I'm going to say this one more time. The requirements to get there. You tell me that, yes. But can you tell me how I'm going to stay there and what I have to do in order to thrive there? These proclamations sound good and are worthy of dancing over Amen. Because they tickle my emotions. God's going to give me a new level. I name my church next level. What does that mean? Good God Almighty, what does it mean? What do I have to do? How do I have to behave? How do I have to change to operate in the next level? Listen, listen, listen. If you get a doctorate degree, that's different than doing your practicum. Amen. You do your little practicum to help you to become a doctor. You don't behave the same way when you're in a different phase of your learning. Once you get that lawyer degree, amen, you can stand in front of the judge, but you got to do the work. Every promotion, every grade, every change, every new position requires me to be, behave, and do something different. Amen. I got a scripture for you because somebody's questioning, well, what's your scripture? Here's the scripture, Mark 2 and 22. No one puts new wine in old wineskins. Good God Almighty. Nobody does that. For the wine will burst the wineskins. Amen. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And the wine and the skins will both be lost. New wine requires new skins. I'm going to say that again. New wine requires new skins. Our scripture today says this. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. The New Living Translation says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The other translation says, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Philip says this, don't get your stimulus from wine, good God Almighty, for there is always the danger of excess drinking. But let the spirit stimulate, good God Almighty, your souls. What says this? And stop being intoxicated with wine, in which state of intoxication there is profligacy, but be constantly controlled by the spirit. So y'all know what it means to be drunk and intoxicated. Amen. Amen. All of us weren't saved all the time. Amen. I don't see no hands up. 
Amen. If you haven't, you've seen folks that have been intoxicated. You know, we call that sloppy drunk. We sing, we've seen that before, sloppy drunk folks. Yeah, amen. I'm just being real with you. We've seen sloppy, and we've seen, seen some, oh my God, let me not say that. When people are sloppy drunk, many lose control. Amen. Some do what they would not normally do, say things and behave in ways they would not. But amen. Somehow, amen, like my bishop used to say, the rookish juice, the cluckers give them the ability to do something they would not normally do. Paul says this leads to ruin. Then Paul says, but be filled with the spirit. And that word but means I have to do something opposite than the previous phrase that was there. Paul says, what you got to do is learn how to level up. Now, I know the kids have something that the kids have a new meaning of level up. Amen. I had to read that, you know. Amen. But this is the real meaning. Filled means you got to level up. Now, I come from the time when we always had gas stations and you always had gas attendants. Amen. Some of y'all don't know about that. Y'all come up in the new era. And man, you sat in the car and then the man came up to you when he was coming to fill your tank and said, do you want me to top that off or do you want me to level that up? Hallelujah. Do you want me to top it off? and level, level it up. It means to make fill, to fill up, to fill, to full, to cause, to abound, to flourish, or supply liberally. Amen. This was not a question to the church, but it was a command, be filled. And so everyone that is under the sound of my voice, that empowering word, while we're going through this time of brokenness and consecration, amen, I ask you, I implore you, be filled. Get under the control of the spirit. Lose yourself in the spirit every day. Here we are confronted with our daily emptiness, amen, and are commanded to level up every day, filled to the full of the presence of God. Your life is radically changed by what fills you. Good God Almighty, Holy Ghost, I thank you. Your life is radically changed by what fill, you are, what fills you. Woo, good God Almighty, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your life is radically changed by what fills you continually, constantly, moment by moment, be filled with and controlled by the Spirit of God. Amen. Keep on being filled. Be being kept filled. Filling is not just one time moment. Amen. Your baptism into the body of Christ is one time, but you can be refilled and refreshed every single day. In fact, the present tense aspect of the command indicates that we are not relying, good God Almighty, I'm not relying, amen, Pastor Blake, on a past filling. Amen. I like with the old Baptist speeches. I come to you, O God, as an empty vessel before a full fountain. <laughs> Good God Almighty, I got a deeper revelation of that. Every day I would say, what do they mean? Because every day life can cause me to be emptied out. And I need to be refilled with the presence of God. It is a command that includes the idea of continuous and continuation. Being filled with the spirit is not an option for believers, but a mandate. This is the experience that we need to go back. I remember as a young man, we used to go back to the altar and they used to say, baby, you need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. They didn't say you needed a good baptism. Amen, I remember I could hear, hear the saints saying, let it fall, let it fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Let it fall, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Amen. They weren't saying I needed to be baptized again. They were saying, you've been through the storm and the rain. Amen, but now you need a what? You need to re-up. Amen. You need to level up. Amen. This is the experience that we need. Brokenness and refilling. Now, of course, I got David as a witness here. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. This is in the old King James Version. Wash me, good God Almighty, and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh -huh. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Watch this, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Then he goes down and says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence. Here it goes. Uh -huh. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me, good God Almighty, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. In the morning, be filled. Hallelujah. Our prayer every morning, Lord, to be God, fill me again. In the morning, be filled. Amen. Let it fall on me. Hallelujah. Let it drench me. Let the power of God move in me in fresh ways every day. Let it fall on me. Let me level up. Let me level up on you. Amen. Don't baptize me again, but help me 
every day to level up. Amen. When I say to you level up, what I'm is saying is there is always more room for more God in you every day. Amen. Maybe you have gone through it this week. Amen. Go back to God and ask God to level up. Level up. Let me say this to you. Many of us don't level up when we come out of our trial. Amen. We come out bitter. We come out broken. Yeah, but we don't level up. David said this, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I know you've been through. Amen. But level up, children, before you come out. Amen. Can I say this? Before you lay hands on me, make sure you level up. Hallelujah. Before you pray for me, make sure you've leveled up. Make sure you got a refill. Make, make sure you go back to the altar. Go through those steps again. Make sure God is at the top of your life. Make sure that you've been broken enough. Amen. That you can really see me. We talked about that in Bible study. Can you see me? Amen. You can't really see me unless you've been broken. All you see in me is the reflection of you in me. But if you've been broken, you can see me and you can speak to me in prophetic ways that can heal me. Amen. Because you can comfort me with the same comfort whereby you have been comforted. Alan, before you teach, amen, learn how. Amen. Amen. That is the word for today. Amen. Let's level up, saints. Sometimes you're going to have to tell the saints, baby, you need to level up. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you're not sanctified. I'm not saying you're not, you shouldn't speak. But sometimes we need to go tell the saints, baby, you, you, you're a little empty. Yeah, man, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're a little empty. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Let me encourage you to level up. Amen. So at a powering word, when somebody tell you, baby, level up, amen, that means go back to the altar, get a refilling. A refilling of the presence of God. Amen. I'm going to encourage you today. Amen. In this time. Amen. I believe that God is doing something in the house of God. Amen. I really believe that God is doing something in the house of God to, for those of us, for those of you that are really seeking God in a very real way. I have come to realize there are certain things I've been leveling up. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. Amen. There's some things God is changing in me that I'll never go back. Some experience that I've had with God during this time, amen, that I'll never, listen, I come to realize, Sister Devon, I don't need as much TV as I thought I needed. Hallelujah. I done pulled off of Facebook. I don't need to hear everybody's stuff. And listen, I listen, what I need from God is a word from God, amen, and a newness and freshness of spirit. There wasn't nothing wrong, amen, with where I was before. But if God has taken me somewhere new, there's some new behaviors that I need to have. Hallelujah. And they might be things that God has spoken of in my life before and gave me a glimpse of, but right now I need to be prepared. Amen. And I wouldn't be a good leader if I didn't tell you what it took for all of us to get to the next level. Amen. Because we can pronounce the next level over people's lives. And when they step into the next level, they are not prepared for what it takes to stay there, to thrive there, to maintain there. Amen. To be successful in that level. And they become discouraged and they see other people who level up and move up and move on. But you haven't been clear about the criteria. When God whispers to you, tell the people to level up, go back to God and say, what should I tell the people that they have to do? Hallelujah. To get ready. The same God that told you to tell the people to level up is the same God I tell you what to do to tell the people to go God Almighty. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. God, I tell you. Amen. It's in God's word. Anytime they, they had to repent or God was getting ready to shift the people into something new, God always told them, amen, what they needed to do, amen, to get ready, what they needed to do. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard the scripture. If my people who are, would humble themselves and pray, wait a minute, see, then will I hear, wait. So what they had to do before the healing came is that they had to humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn from the wicked ways. I just can't go to the people and say, you're getting ready to hear from God. God's getting ready to move on you. No, 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 no. There were some prerequisite behaviors. If my people, if it's a conditional word, if my people who are called by my name, this wasn't for the folks in the world. If my people who are called by my name would what? Humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Wait a minute. No healing of the land, no forgiveness of sins, unless we turn, repent, and be humble. 
but we get to the easy part. Oh, healing's coming, children. Oh, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. No, baby, you got to get up here. You got to prepare for that. Hallelujah. And as leaders and pastors and churches, we must tell people. Now, that's the work part. The saints don't want the work part. But you can really dance good if you, if you uh, meet the requirements. Hallelujah. Listen, you can dance really good if you meet the requirements. I see somebody's hand going up. Listen, it's nothing like getting your own diploma and getting your degree, amen, and be moved to the next level. You could really dance across the stage. You really don't care if they give you the diploma or not. Hallelujah. I've seen some saints get elevated in God. They don't care whether or not the bishop lay hands to consecrate them or not. They're so happy that God leveled them up. Hallelujah. I'm glad that God is leveling people up in this day, but meet the requirements. Hallelujah. Then you'll be able to sustain in that next level. Listen, don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, amen, but be filled with the spirit. Is that all right? God bless you is our prayer. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. To the members of Empowering Word, please remember that um, we will have our annual church meeting is coming up. Amen, to the board members, we will have a board meeting. Amen, there's gonna be some important things that we're going to share with you and some important decisions, amen, that we've made, amen, as we move forward in ministry, amen. I'm telling you all, the best is yet to come. Now, let me tell you why the best is yet to come, amen. The best is yet to come because we're meeting God's requirements, amen, amen. We're meeting God's requirements. There's certain things that God will do for us that are unconditional, but there are some things that are written in the scripture that says, if you will do this, then I will do that. Oh, they missed that one, pastor. Yes, they missed that one. If you do this, then I will do that. Amen. I'm the kind of pastor that, yes, God, I receive all the unconditional things that you've done. Amen. The unconditional promises, the covenant. But there are some things that if we do this, God will do that. Amen. They're going to be gravy. Amen. On top of it all. God bless you is our prayer. Be encouraged. Those of you that on Facebook, we're praying for you. Please send your prayer request in. Amen. We have intercessors. Join us in Bible study. Amen. We're now moving from the place of brokenness to the place of intercession. Amen. In our Bible study. Amen. Amen. And we thank God that God is taking us from a place of brokenness. We spent about a month on brokenness. And now we're going to talk about prayer and intercession for the people and for the world. God bless you is my prayer. Be encouraged. <laughs>